Hey everyone, welcome back here on this Wednesday, July 3rd on Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. And we're talking about a hurricane barrel update. The new update here continues to be a category four hurricane across portions there of Jamaica at 140 mile per hour winds. We did lose a lot of the eye wall from this system as it did crash ashore uh, portions there of Southern Jamaica and a lot of convection moving over Jamaica, a lot of thunderstorm activity, some very heavy rainfall, possibly some mudslides, some big flooding across the island there. This is actually headed toward the Cayman Islands over the next 24 hours as well. And looking at the history of this system, going all the way back to some of the islands here in the Windward Islands of Barbados, St. Vincent, Grenada, a lot of these areas saw tropical storm force winds and even hurricane force winds. And you can see the southern part of the island there of Jamaica is currently experiencing those major hurricane force winds, those wind gust swaths over 130, if not up to 140 miles per hour and all of the island of Jamaica back there toward Haiti did even see there uh, more of those tropical storm force winds. So we do have hurricane warnings that continue for the island of Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, and then back here toward the Yucatan, the eastern part there of the Yucatan under those hurricane warnings. We currently have tropical storm watches and warnings there for parts of Belize and the northern part there of the Yucatan as well. So that is all of the alerts that we have with the system currently. And let's look at a couple of the models here. So let's get a general consensus on where this storm will be tracking. Looking at the GFS model, this is the latest 18Z GFS model here. So as we go into your Thursday, don't necessarily pay attention to the pressure on here, but just the track of the system. The GFS takes it across the southern part of the Cayman Islands here after it moves past Jamaica today and tonight and then gets it closer there toward the eastern side of the Yucatan sometime later in the day on Thursday. On Friday, Friday's the big day with the GFS moving this over the northern part of the Yucatan and then back over the open waters there of the Bay of Campeche as we go into Friday night. Going into Saturday, it's over the Bay of Campeche and the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. It will start to likely re-strengthen possibly back to a category one hurricane at this point. And then it looks like the GFS here has this at the intersection of extreme northeastern Mexico and down here into the Rio Grande Valley around Brownsville, Texas with potentially a landfalling hurricane or strong tropical storm as we go into the day on Sunday, July 7th. Looking at the GEM model here, this is the Canadian guidance. You can see on Thursday, similar thing, maybe just a little bit further south of a track here than the GFS that came out at 18Z. This is the 12Z GEM model and you can see as we go into Friday, moves it over the northern part of the Yucatan as expected. So both the models agree on that. And then it moves back over the Bay of Campeche. They also agree on that. So it may start to re-strengthen here. And then it looks like maybe just a little bit further south of a solution than what the GFS model had. So maybe affecting more of northeastern Mexico than the Rio Grande Valley and Brownsville, Texas, but something to keep a very close eye on as we go into Sunday here as well. And then finally, looking at the ECMWF model, this is the European model. This is the 12Z European model. Very similarly, it has a track like the GFS does here in a pretty strong system. Again, skirting the southern portion of the Cayman Islands. And then as we go into Friday, a little bit further south into the central part of the Yucatan, moves it back over the Bay of Campeche as well. A lot of the models agree on that placement. And then it actually has it even further south than what the GEM and the GFS model shows more affecting Mexico with that landfalling system and minimal impacts there to Texas on Sunday. So there's still some uncertainty in exactly where this makes landfall. Does it make landfall on the east coast of Mexico, the northeast coast of Mexico, or southern Texas? That is a big question mark at this point. Let's look at the ensemble model tracks here, especially looking at the ECMWF, the European ensemble guidance. The mean here is that black line. It shows it moving just south of the Cayman Islands with the main low pressure storm track and then over the central part of the Yucatan Peninsula back over the Bay of Campeche and then it looks like it curves it up into the northeastern part of Mexico making landfall there but then right along the coast there of Texas it may kind of hang around areas like Brownsville, Corpus Christi and Victoria, Texas and it kind of has it moving up there toward Houston. Again this is an ensemble track taking multiple different members and putting it into a mean. Some are way further south, some are way further north here. Still a lot of uncertainty in this part of the forecast because it hasn't 
haven't really made um, landfall in the Yucatan yet. I think once we make landfall in the Yucatan with this hurricane on Friday, we're going to get a lot better data to as we have land interaction, what this will do to impact the system and the land interaction and where it'll go. Will it go into Mexico again? Will it go into Texas or even Louisiana? Some of the northern outliers go that far north here as well. Here's the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida. Continues to have it as a major hurricane all the way through Thursday morning as it passes just to the south of the Cayman Islands. The reason why the Cayman Islands here have hurricane warnings is because that wind field, the hurricane wind strength, will still be there across the islands as we go into through the day on Thursday. Crashing back to a Category 1 or Category 2 hurricane as we go into Thursday afternoon and evening. And making landfall as a hurricane there in the Yucatan. Again, either a Category 1 or a Category 2 hurricane most likely there on the eastern part of the Yucatan as we go into the Friday morning time frame. And then as it has that big land interaction and how far west it moves through the Yucatan here, does it move through the northern part of the Yucatan or more south? That is going to be the big question because the more land interaction there will be, the more disorganized the system will get. But the National Hurricane Center does, on arrival towards the northeastern part of the Mexican coast and up here into south portions of Texas, does have this at least restrengthening on Sunday afternoon to a low-end Category 1 hurricane before making inroads there into the Rio Grande Valley, perhaps, on Monday as a tropical storm. Looking here at the rainfall amounts, for Jamaica, we could be seeing locally over a foot of rain rainfall over the next couple of hours there. The Cayman Islands, especially the southernmost islands there, seeing potentially anywhere from about four to six inches, maybe even six to eight inches worth of rain there. So some significant flooding on the southernmost islands as well. And then it's a little bit more uncertain, but it does look like we have portions there of the southern part of Mexico into the Yucatan there, picking up anywhere from around 6 to 8 to even 8 to 12 inches worth of rain there. Again, how far north or south this goes is a little bit uncertain, and that will carry the rainfall threat and the flooding threat along with it. Here are the arrival times approximately for the tropical storm force winds uh, into the Cayman Islands overnight tonight around midnight or around there here into the 2 o'clock in the morning time frame. It will be arriving there in western Cuba around Thursday morning, and then as we go into Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening, I think that makes an arrival there into the Yucatan, even down as far south as Belize, and then making potentially an arrival over portions of the eastern, northeastern coast of Mexico the Rio Grande Valley in South Central Texas sometime is Saturday evening or early Sunday morning there with those tropical storm force and maybe even those low end category one hurricane force winds as well. This system is still in an area where we have very warm sea surface temperature anomalies. So no surprise, this is still a category four, 140 mile per hour hurricane as it moves westward into the Western Caribbean and then having that land interaction and then moving over somewhat of those slightly below normal temperatures temperature anomalies for this time of year in the Bay of Campeche. These waters are still pretty relatively warm, uh, but we did have had a lot of tropical systems here into the Bay of Campeche that have moved into Mexico. This system kind of some um, upwellings from a lot of that from underneath of the ocean surface. So definitely seeing um, a lot of the cooler waters mixing up from the, uh, from underneath the surface of the water there. So I think this system is probably going to be a lot weaker uh, as we move it across the Yucatan, as we have more of the land interaction especially, but then into the Gulf or the Bay of Campeche as it makes landfall in either Mexico or Texas here because of those water temperatures are a little cooler than what they would have been if we wouldn't have had those storms that moved through several weeks ago. So thank you all for watching. We will keep you uh, updated on everything that you need to know about major hurricane barrel around the clock. We'll have a new video forecast for you tomorrow across the mainland U.S. and another update as well, potentially on hurricane barrel. So stick with me here. You know what to do. Press the like button down below. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns. Subscribe to the channel. We'll keep you updated. Thank you all for watching. My name is Hunter with Weather on the Go, and I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their day out there.